All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks very much for coming. Um, as Niall said, my name is Sean Landsman. I uh, deal with the framework side of things <coughs> at AG Grid. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about uh, it's a brief talk, and I'm going to break it down into two rough halves. The first half is how we support the frameworks um, and how we keep abreast of things. And the second half is uh, a favorite of mine, is, which is how grid knowledge is portable across frameworks or no framework at all. So Niall uh, started the company in 2015. Shortly afterwards, um, he added support. We added support for AngularJS, Web Components, Angular. By Angular, I mean Angular 2 Plus um, and React. Um, and that was very beta support for Angular, uh, Angular side of things, because Angular was still beta at that stage. <coughs> Shortly afterwards, we added full support for Angular, um, even though it was still beta, and that was driven in large part due to customer demand. Uh, the following year, we added support for Aurelia, Vue, and Polymer 2, and we've recently just added support for Polymer 3. <coughs> this is an exciting part of my job, is that I keep ahead, and I keep abreast of these things. Um, it represents its own challenges, trying to have one grid with many disparate uh, frameworks, but it works well for us, and it should work well for you, in that you can port and change between frameworks, not necessarily within the same application, but within frameworks and not lose that knowledge. I'll talk a bit about that later on. So hands up who uses a framework, uh, any framework. All right. Within that group, who uses Angular? React? View? Anything else? One. <laughs> I wonder what that, what, what is that? Polymer. Polymer, okay, here we go, yay. Um, so this is based on NPM downloads. It doesn't include our core support, so for people who don't use the framework at all, or people who use AngularJS. So this is just based on uh, framework support. The numbers roughly tie up with our downloads that we just saw here. So 55% Angular, 40% React, <coughs> and 5% Vue. Vue is an interesting one, and we'll come back to that in a minute. <coughs> but the vast majority of our audience is on the slide. Vue is growing rapidly, and as I say, I'll talk a bit about that later. Uh, a big part of what we do at AG Grid, um, and since the very first, uh, very first days, has been keeping up and keeping abreast of new ideas, new technologies, growing trends. Um, that's reflected on the second slide that I showed you with all the framework support, um, and it's reflected on the way we do things. Uh, in the next half, in the next section, I'll talk a bit about the React side of things and then a bit more about the view. Um, on the Angular side of things um, is a good example of how we keep abreast. When we first added Angular support, we had about four or five different guides and examples. We had System.js, we had Webpack 1, 2, and 3, and so on. We still have those examples, we still have those guides, but now we use the de facto mechanism, which is the Angular CLI, as that's become the de facto uh, build tool for Angular applications. It's not the only one, um, but it's the one that we use now to reflect current trends. Um, we constantly add in new guides and documentation and examples based on customer feedback and also based on growing trends. So we've got guides for RxJS, React Redux, Material Design. Rob's recently added a GraphQL guide. <coughs> and in the next release, we'll have guides for Jest um, and Vue and TypeScript, for example. And that's driven partly on trends and partly based on what you guys ask us for. Um, moving back to what I mentioned at the beginning about React 16, um, this is, illustrates a point um, I wanted to make, that how we're constantly trying to keep abreast and keep ahead of the curve. It doesn't help you or us if we're reflect if we reflexive, if we only wait for a change. It helps us and you if we can keep ahead of those changes coming up. And React 16 is a good example of that. So the method we use to, dynamic, to allow you guys to create dynamic React components, either renderers, editors, filters, and so on, um, is an internal method into React. It's the only method uh, with version 15 and before that we could use. So we used it, and everyone who did something similar used that same method. But we were aware that it's a private method, or an internal method, and so subject to change. And part of what I do is read GitHub threads, uh, beta releases, and so on. And in one of the threads, as an offhand comment, um, it was noted that, that the method we use should be deprecated at some point. And because it's a private method, it could be deprecated in a minor release. So we started looking at what we could do. This is the current mechanism. Um, it's pretty simple. If you look at that, you see this.react components. That's the component you guys would provide us. 
uh, an end editor, renderer, and so on. Um, and then we create a component and we render it into the subtree. <coughs> Fairly simple. Um, you'll notice that the method's prefixed with unstable. <coughs> Excuse me. Oop. Um, and that indicates that React team can, at any point, even in a minor release, drop support for that. Um, which isn't great, but as I said, that's the only mechanism in 15 and before that we could use to render React components. With React 16, we have portals. A um, bit of digging around, a bit of looking at the documentation, a bit of looking at the actual React source code, ended up with this. Not much code, pretty similar to the old method, um, but not actually that documented. So one of the challenges <coughs> we have as a team um, and so having one grid offering and many frameworks is that we find ourselves doing things that no one else is doing, which is great. Um, it's challenging, though. Um, so we have to look at the source code sometimes, and then things do become documented. If I look at the React portal documentation now, it's actually pretty documented, and things like this are documented. But to keep ahead of the curve um, and to ensure that you guys don't have any degradation of support when things disappear in a minor release, um, we have to keep ahead of the curve. So this should be... Uh, give you some confidence that we're constantly looking ahead and not being reflective. Um, just one point on that is that if you use React now, 15, 16, and you've upgraded, <coughs> um, we have an automatic toggle just to ensure that you don't have any degradation of service. We'll carry on using the existing method. You've got an option to use the new method. I encourage you to try it, see if you're happy with it, to use the new portals. But if you use the old method and React does drop that inst unstable support, we'll automatically flip over to using Portal. So you shouldn't have any loss of functionality. If you're using React, however, I would encourage you to enable that flag, make sure everything's happy in the Portal land. If it isn't, let us know. Um, but anyway, that's, so that's, that's an example of us looking ahead and looking, uh, trying to future-proof the application. Um, another example of us looking ahead is Polymer support. <coughs> Web components in general, and Polymer in particular, I think is an interesting area. <coughs> it hasn't quite gained the traction. Um, I thought it might. Um, I still think there's potential there. Maybe not. But uh, last year, we added Polymer 2 support. In a recent release, we've just added support for Polymer 3. There's a number of major changes around there, none of which are surprising if you, watch the, uh, if you look at the Polymer landscape. Uh, no more Bower. Bower was fine, but really, it's been, it's been deprecated for a while. Uh, not, uh, NPM or YARN for dependencies, no more HTML imports. If you don't know what that means, I, I guess it doesn't matter now. But on the left-hand side, we have Polymer 2. Um, some of that may not look familiar. On the right, you have Polymer 3, and that should look familiar. If you're using Angular, React, Vue, anything, the, the right-hand side should look familiar. On the left, we have Polymer 2. On the right, we have Polymer 3. Not very different, but different enough. And you've got DOM, module, and so on. And on the right-hand side, we've got a normal class definition. Regardless of what framework you're using, um, or no framework at all, really, the right-hand side should look familiar. It's, not, it's nothing terribly uh, esoteric there. So I think that's a positive move. But that's just another example of keeping ahead. <coughs> and another example, and the last example of trying to keep ahead, is that for the next release, I don't have slides for this because it's still a work in progress, um, and then following release, uh, we're going to be working hard to make, uh, improve our Vue and React offerings to make it a bit more idiomatic, make it a bit more natural and uh, intuitive. So, for example, on the Vue support, you can use Vuex uh, and things like that and internationalization, but you need to do a bit of manual stitching um, in the next release, which should be, I think, early next year. A lot of that should be automatic. And the following release, I'll do the same thing with React. So all of the things that I'm ch talking about uh, won't be big functional changes, but it'll make your life as a developer a bit better, a bit easier, and a bit more idiomatic of whatever framework you're using. If you're using no framework at all, then uh, <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not giving you anything. Um, so the second half of my talk is uh, something I really like about the grid, <coughs> and it's bad. it covers um, how you can use any framework, or no framework at all, and retain that knowledge. Um, so our background, myself, Rob, and Niall, we all come from an enterprise background. Um, and we're used to things being a lot more portable and, and usable across uh, versions and so on. And, and the thing I really like about AG Grid <coughs> is how the grid knowledge, specifically AG Grid knowledge, is portable across frameworks or no framework at all. And what I mean by that, I'm trying to illustrate with a simple flowchart. So let's say you start a new project, you elect to use AG Grid as part of your stack. Um, you, start, you learn AG Grid, you start your new project. You learn whatever framework you're using, and you deliver the project. That's great, normal flow. 
you start a new project, say you start a new team, or for whatever reason your team elects to use a new framework, um, you don't have to learn a new grid. Um, the AG grid knowledge you've retained will be the same regardless of what framework you're using, or whether you're using no framework at all. 99% uh, of the knowledge you've gained will be transferable. There will be differences. So, for example, if you're using React to Angular, bindings and so on will be different. That shouldn't be a surprise. But the actual React thing, how you do pivoting, how you define a renderer, how you do grouping, all of that's transferable. <coughs> to illustrate this, uh, we've got a little simple app here. I, I say it's simple. Actually, there's a lot, a lot of things going on. We've got some grouping there. We've got some custom renderers. But still, it's a relatively simple grid. And I'm going to illustrate this in uh, compare the two, three. So we've got JavaScript, Angular, and React. I actually see that the, <laughs> the middle one is t uh, React, and the right-hand one's Angular, so ignore the symbols. This is, <laughs> this is a high level. I'll zoom in in a minute. But even at a high level, you should hopefully on the top half see the shape of things are similar. Right? This is the same application in uh, JavaScript, React, and Angular. If we highlight the grid-specific configuration, you should, it should highlight the fact that this is still uh, very similar, right? These are three different frameworks, or two frameworks in JavaScript. And if we zoom in, the grid-specific stuff is pretty much identical. <coughs> now, this is admittedly a relatively simple application, but it's not that simple. We've got some um, grouping, we've got some um, uh, renderers and all that sort of thing. The renderers will be different, of course, if you use an Angular or JavaScript or v uh, React or anything. Um, but the configuration side of things is pretty much identical. Um, if you don't change frameworks in your company and you don't move across, well, then that's fine. I mean, that's nice to have. But if you do, if you work for a large enterprise where it is likely or possible that you change frameworks, this is a real win, in my opinion, a real advantage. All right, and that's the end of my talk. <laughs>